Welcome everyone, I'm Igor Steinbuck, and today we're going to be talking about randonneuring. What is it? How do you do it? What kind of bike do you need? What's a brevet? And afterwards, we're actually going to start talking about a build on our own Pass Hunter in a randonneur style. So randonneuring is a sport of long distance organized rides. Basically, they're all completely self-supported, meaning you have to take your own stuff and you're responsible for any mechanical breakdowns, food, anything else along the way. They range anywhere from 200 kilometers on up. Fun fact, there is a brevet in Poland that's 3,100 kilometers long and I cannot pronounce it. So each event has a maximum time limit. There aren't any winners for fastest or anything like that. So it's not a race, um, but there are controls along the way. And those controls could be getting a receipt at a 24 hour supermarket, uh, identifying something on a road marking, or actually having a volunteer sign your brevet card. It's basically touring with more paperwork. All right, so let's get into some of the equipment. What kind of bike do you need? Honestly, you can ride whatever bike you want. You could ride a traditional randonneur style bike. You could ride a fat bike. You could ride a modern race machine. It doesn't matter. There aren't any regulations for that. Someone in 2009 even did PVP on a kick scooter with a carbon front fork, a 700C wheel, and 16 inch rear wheel. It's crazy and it's awesome. But today we're gonna to talk about the Pass Hunter and how we're going to build it up, what kind of features it has, and how you can build your own rando machine. So what makes the Pass Hunter a good rando bike? Well, it is made from double butted chromoly steel with the numerous butting profiles that we designed, which makes it relatively lightweight, durable, and very comfortable. All desirable traits you want to look for in a rando bike. It uses a 68 millimeter threaded bottom bracket, very standard. 12 by 142 millimeter through axle dropouts. Flat mount disc brakes for excellent stopping performance in all weather conditions. It also has a tapered head tube. So if you wanted to run a carbon fork in the future for a lighter front end, you can. It has fender mounts in all of the places that you need for fenders at the chain stay bridge, at the seat stay bridge, and down here at the dropouts. The main triangle has two sets of water bottle bosses, one on top of the down tube, one on the seat tube, and one underneath of the down tube. The fork is also made from chromoly steel and features nubbins on the side of the fork blade for a cargo cage, cargo rack, or uh, an extra water bottle spot. There are hard fender mounts underneath the fork crown as well as underneath the dropouts. The dropouts are 100 by 12 millimeters as well. All very normal stuff. Lastly, there are rando rack mounts in the front so if you wanted to run a rando bag these will be very useful now if all those numbers and terminology don't mean anything to you right now that's okay it's all part of the process we'll go over everything that you need to build up a bike so hopefully you can either build up your own frame set or work on your own bike at home Let's start with the bottom row. The bottom left has the split crown race, then you have the bearing, and then the lower cup. On that top row, 
you have the upper cup, the bearing, the split ring, a thin shim, and then the top cap in that order. It's important that they go in that order, otherwise things will not turn properly. So now we're going to press the headset cups in. Um, the headset cups are inserted with a press fit, so you definitely want to use a little bit of grease when the cups are going into the head tube. It's also a good idea to use a little bit of grease on the actual cup as well, just so that you don't have any binding or anything like that as the uh, cups are being pressed into the head tube. So we're going to press the upper cup in first. There are several ways you can press a headset cup into a head tube. I will always recommend that you buy a proper tool or take it to a shop for, so that they can install it. You, you can read about people hammering in their headset cups using a block of wood and a hammer or some other sort of form to get that cup into the head tube. I don't recommend it because it is not uncommon to damage the head tube, damage the headset cup, and potentially ovalize something. And then your frame is toast. So use the right tools for the job. And now we're going to be pressing in the lower headset cup. And you can see the difference in the sizing. So the upper headset cup is smaller than the lower because it's a tapered design. Here's a close-up of it actually going into the head tube. So what Connor's doing here is he's lining up the logos. And so now we're going to start the um, internal component assembly. So put the bearing in with the taper side facing down towards the head tube. For the fork crown, you just simply slide the split ring over the fork crown and just snap it on there. And then put the uh, lower bearing on top with the taper side up. So now as the fork goes in, everything is seated nicely. The split ring, compression ring, and then a thin shim. And finally, the top cap. And what you can do here for the time being is just slip the stem over the steer tube and clamp it down so that the fork doesn't fall out of the head tube while you're doing other stuff. And there you have it. One fork and headset installed into our Pass Hunter frame. So now we're going to take the bottom bracket out of the out of its box. Those two black screws are the crank bolts. If you get a Velo Orange crank set, you don't need them. It's if you get a different crank set that you would have to use them. On the left, we have the non-drive side cup. And on the right, we have the drive side spindle and bearing assembly. There's our 50.4 crank. It's a nice wide range, 4630 chain ring set. Nicely polished. Woo, look at that. So now we're going to install the bottom bracket. Put a little bit of grease on both the bottom bracket shell threads as well as actually on the drive side cup so that everything threads together. The threading is left hand for the drive side. So you can see that Connor is screwing it in counterclockwise. So now Connor is going to use the uh, bottom bracket tool to get the final tightening of the drive side cup. If you plan on doing this a lot, I would highly recommend getting one. It definitely makes things a lot easier. So 
plug it down. Now the drive side is done. Now we can move on to the non-drive side. Same thing, a little bit of grease. Don't need to go crazy. And the non-drive side is regular right-hand threaded. So he's just trying to catch those threads. And so Connor's going to finish up tightening down the non-drive cup, cup with that same tool. And then the bottom bracket is good to go and ready for a beautiful crank set to be mounted to it. All right, we're about to get controversial here. The grease or not to grease of the bottom bracket spindle. I have always greased it. It's never been an issue for me. Some people think that it pushes the crank arm too far onto the bottom bracket spindle. I've just always done it this way. When you have two metals touching each other, you should use grease. And that's good and tight. And same thing on the non-drive side. A little bit of grease. And like I said before, the our crank sets come with the crank caps and screws, so you don't need to use the ones that are provided with the bottom bracket. They're also self-extracting. So if you do need to take it off, you don't need any special tools or anything, just the same eight millimeter that you use to install it. It's always a good idea to check your clearances on the drive and non-drive side arms. This has perfect clearance, so it's ready to go. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Today we talked about what is Rand Enduring, what makes a good rando bike, and we started building up our own Pass Hunter rando build project. Um, we pressed the headset cups in, got the fork installed, installed the bottom bracket, and the double crank set. Going forward, the rest of the plan for this build is going to be nice tires, fenders, drop bars with integrated shifters, um, a front rack and bag, and then to top it all off, we're going to install some dynamo lighting because. When it's 3 a.m., you definitely want good lights. Um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.